Hey guys, John here. Um, this is just a an update on how everything has been going on with gaming. Um, hope everyone had a wonderful July Fourth weekend. Um, because it was fun. I know I did. I launched a lot of fireworks and had a lot of fun with my friends and family. Um. Anyway, on the gaming front, everything's been doing good. Uh, the Thieves Guild campaign off to a bang and start. Um. Which that I will actually get to a moment because there's something I want to talk about that I did in that session, in the last session I did of that game. Um, also, the Saturday game that I normally play, we're actually on hold, we've been on hold for two weeks for that game. But actually, we started another one of the players in that group. He started, he wanted to start a first level campaign with first edition, and um, it's kind of cool. It, it, it's kind of a cool little exercise thing where you know. We're gonna learn about our characters. You know, it's gonna be a lot of characterization. It's, it's, it's gonna be fun stuff. And I've been really young because you know I haven't played a first level game in oh years. Well, yeah, I really haven't years since I started. You know, cause, well, one I've been DMing a whole lot and I just haven't been running first edition in a while. Well, I haven't been playing in first edition. That's first level. Um, so that's fun. And I enjoy that. Um, but anyway, I also, um, discovered Staff Sandy, if you remember, one of my first videos I ever did, I showed you a Staff Sandy I did for my 4th edition game, game, well, I actually started writing this a couple months ago, it was, um, I haven't even finished it, it's, uh, Staff Sandy for 1st edition, or just kind of another Kind of just another game. It kind of just makes it more a little bit more general, a little bit more setting neutral, um, kind of thing. So it's not kind of married to fourth edition. So I can kind of always have the staff Sandy, which I could always do. I always just take take it out and just use it. But yeah, I kind of just wanted to redo it. However, that's a whole other ball of wax. But anyway, the top, my main topic of this video is something I did to my players in my last game session. <sighs> Something that really gave the game, I think, an edge. Um, and that would be... I stole from the party. I stole from the party. Put this in context. This Thieves Guild campaign I'm running is about 10th level, and it's... It's 10th level, so, you know, I, I, gave my pl I gave players, you know, I gave them starting loot. I gave them a lot of starting loot, and I gave them a lot of starting experience for, mag for magic items. Because they're 10th level, they would have this. They would have, especially, you know, the thieves, you know, they would have them, you know, heists and jobs or, you know, dungeons they'd explore. They'd have it. So I, I calculated that. However, when they got to the city where they're going to, Monmerg and the whole of the sea princes in the world of Greyhawk, first of all, they, um, they got through the city, and I actually told them kind of, I, I told them very nicely, this city is, you know, they arrived from the sea, and they saw up on the hill is this, like, magnificent gem of, like, a Walden city. However, like, when they reach the ports, it's like a slum city of, like, canal, of sewage canals running through the streets, and it's filthy, and there's even, like, some smoke, and it's very much like London, like, in the 1890s with the smog. It's a lot of my design touchstone for that. But anyway, they decided to go ahead and try to do what they're kind of sent to do, um, start trying to rebuild their, their guild. But build up their guild, and they just thought, you know, we'll, we'll try getting into the whole city, you know, we'll try taking over this city. That's what they said. That's what they said. Around the table. That's what a good majority of them said. So, I have this plan from the cat over. They, they're on their way there, they get information, they're on their way. They come across a wagon, being, that was, a guy was run over by a wagon. The guy was asked for help, and it was very convincing. However, they got led down an alleyway, which, I uh, know, every, and a lot of people at the table saw this coming, you know. Turned out, yeah, it was a trap. However, turned out they were actually city guard members. And, yeah, 
they, they were, the city guard attacked them. They also had mages and they had extra cleric mages that attacked them. It was basically, I gave them a very impossible encounter. I gave them, the guards I think were one level ahead of the party and the mages were pretty level. So I gave them, I gave them a tough fight. Actually, I gave them a fight they weren't gonna win. No, I didn't tell them that. I didn't tell them their AC, which they all, they all knew that it was coming. You know, they're not supposed to win. Um, but yeah, no, I gave them, I gave them a no-win scenario. And I actually, I, if I had the sheets on me, I'd even show you. And I even set it up to the. The guards had magic swag on them, too. They had cloaks of displacement, which displaces them. So if they did actually hit them, they would have been like, oh, no, nope, sorry. It's like they're two feet, in, they're like two, uh, you know, they're like two meters away or something. Um, but yeah. Yeah. They could have, they didn't hit them. It was a very hard fight. Very tough. And they lost. Lost a lot. They were thinking, though, a lot of them thought of things that was good. But, um, yeah. They lost. They got knocked out by one of their own parties throwing a box of opiates, which was a good idea. Normal thought. He wanted to knock everybody out. He wanted to cover the retreat. Good thought. But he just put the box part. But, but a good thought. But, yeah, no, they got knocked out. They came to it. And then they, all their shit was gone. All. Oh. Their shit was gone. All the magic, everything, everything, and they were pissed off. Were they pissed off? Oh yes, they were pissed off. And I had to make the list. And I actually, I don't want to kind of flaunt it around, but there it is. Oh, they had a lot of good stuff here. But no, I'm doing that. And that's not to be an asshole. But I'm doing it because it works for the story. Because, and this is kind of what I'm getting at. As a DM, you have to do these types of things. You have to give no win. You have to do this in order to kind of, you have to, players, especially in my group, especially my group and the, my players that I deal with, at least at this moment, they get really big egos. Really big egos. Like, like, cute. Like, their egos are inflated. And if they're watching, they'll, they'll probably make nasty comments and call me a piece of shit. I know. Trust me. I know. But, you know, they do get egos. You do get egos. I know. I get egos when I play. And, you know, as a DM, you just need to hinder that. You just need to take them down. You need to say, Nope, you're not that big. Nope, it doesn't happen this way. Like, you don't just walk into a town and take it over. You don't. That type of shit takes time. There are factions set up. And so, they will now, in the campaign, they kind of get into a bit of a spoil for the players. They'll now have to go up from the bottom up. They'll have to get their stuff. You know, they'll have to earn their stuff. Earn their magic items. Earn their experience points. They're gonna have to think, and they're gonna have to think. They're gonna have to make contacts with people. They can't do it by themselves because it's because you can't do it by yourself. You can't just do it as an in-house thing. You need help. And um, who knows? Maybe they'll get some of this beautiful stuff back. Maybe. Probably not gonna get all of it back, but they'll, they'll get some stuff back. And hell, they even got stuff that I thought was better. They met a smith, and the smith gave them. I, some of them, some of the better stuff, like a dagger that you press a button and two knives, two additional knives come out. Now that's cool. That's actually cool. You know, a collapsible longbow. Stuff I made up. Stuff that's not magical. Stuff that's cool. Stuff that'll help them. They made a contact. But yeah, they got their asses handed to them. And you know what? I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. They needed it. They needed it, and you know what? They'll probably, by the end of this campaign, they might even thank me. Because, you know what? That's just how it rolls. I told them, I even told before in previous videos, I was going to run a darker game, and this is a darker game. Not expecting it, 
But hey, it was darker. Anyway, I'd like to hear your thoughts about this. Uh, I'd like to hear what you guys have done to do it. You can, you know, comment, video response, whatever. I'd like to know what you guys have done because as DMs and what the community and if you like this idea, totally go with it. I, I mean, I even got this idea from a. I'll put a link in the description about it, but uh, Spoonie. Uh, no, I swear, one of his counter monkeys talked about a Thieves World game he ran, and he did something very similar to this. However, those guys, I think, were like first level, so I mean, those guys didn't have much. I did this as 10th level. I pissed my players off. I did. And actually, you know what? I'll say, I'll say it now. I was going to make this a surprise, but I actually recorded that D&D session. And, um, by the way, and I didn't tell him that it was recording until after the session, so you'll get really some genuine So when I put the post out, when all the ending's done on that, and I get the post it, you will hear some really, really fun stuff there. And yeah, that'll be up soon. But yeah, anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on stealing from the party. Um, Darker campaigns always, you know, more storytelling oriented. That's where I'm moving my game. And and yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. And as always, I'm John. Happy gaming, and don't be afraid to go there when you're DMing again.